Yes, yeah, that is. Okay. So we actually have a little bit to finish out of 3.3. Three. Today I want to try to finish out chapter 3. Um, there's a little bit out of 3.3 three, uh, that if you've read the, the section and try the homework out, you've got a couple theorems in there, a theorem and a rule. And they kind of sound a little strange. The one of them certainly sounds pretty strange, Chevy Chef. I sometimes call him Chubby Dude. I have no idea if he actually was chubby. It just sounds that way. So Chebyshev's theorem, and the more you understand standard deviation, the more this theorem makes sense. I am not going to get into the specifics behind the math that went into the numbers that come out of this, but I am going to talk a little bit about the concept. Uh, the math is just a little bit beyond us. But here's the idea. If I went to Florida and I took the ages of people, I might get a bunch of really young people and really old people. You with me? Yes, you are with me. Yes, because I haven't really said too much yet. Okay. Um, so really young, really old. Where would the mean be in this case? Where would the average age be? Right in the middle. These are pretty symmetric. When you average everybody up, you're probably going to come out to about right here. Now, a standard deviation, if I go up one step, one standard deviation, and down one standard deviation, that's kind of the thing I ask you to do on the test. And this is more theory. This is why I like to do that concrete example where I actually have you add a standard deviation, subtract a standard deviation, and then you can go see from the data. Here, this is completely theoretical. How old is this person? I have no idea, Jeff. I just know they're young. That's all he told me. Completely theory. But if I take one step up and one step down, You write that and let you soak that in. You guys cool with those symbols? Add one step to this mean, one standard deviation, subtract one standard deviation from the mean. What Chebyshev said, the very first thing he said was kind of late. You've got to excuse him for that because he's talking about every damn distribution that's possible. What he said was for any distribution within one standard deviation of the mean, there's at least 0% of the data. Which, you know, I would have no problem saying that. I, I wouldn't have to do any damn math at all. Within one step, there's at least 0%. Way to go out on a limb. All right, so, so far, not very impressive. All right? But you guys kind of see how that could work? If I had these, this kind of distribution where I have one big mound over there and one big mound over there, if I take one step up and down, I might not catch anybody. And here comes the real power of this. If I take one more step, according to my picture, I'm going to catch people. <clears throat> but my picture is way too specific. You shouldn't really look at the picture as a proof of anything. But it's just kind of a visual of what's going on. If I take one more step within two standard deviations, of the mean, there's at least, no, I forgot the number, 75% of the data. Now, now, I really want you to think about this. And, and I know on one hand, this just sounds like people playing with numbers and having a great time, but this is, this is reality. I don't care what the hell this di distribution is. It could be ages of people, it could be heights of people, it could be lengths of schnauzers, it could be life of sneakers, it could be whatever the hell. If I find the mean and I take two steps up, two standard deviations and two standard deviations down, I must catch at least 75% of all the data points there are. So if I took the heights of Grossmont students, I would know that 75% of Grossmont students are in between this height and this height, period. So then I can design how tall my doors are so only so many people have to duck. For example, you guys kind of with me? A few of you, like three of you, all right. <laughs> There's you're like, I'm not shaking my head for you, man. You haven't made a damn bit of sense yet. Now, now, what's one thing, let's say I'm God, right? And I reach down and I say, screw statistics. And I, and I that's what a DD would sound like. So, and I just make all these people younger. And I make all these people older. So I'm trying to escape this, right? God says, Screw math. Math is not something I created. Nah. 
or whatever deity you pleased with. It could be flying spinning monster. Um, how, why is that not true? Why do I not... He then says, screw you, Shabby Shabby. Now it's zero. Nah, nah. Why does that not work that way? What is it within the system that still makes that plausible? Standard deviation must then get bigger. So as my data tries to escape, my pursuer, my standard deviation is able to go faster. It catches up with it again. My standard deviation will now get bigger. And I would still catch at least 75% of the data. How are we doing so far? All right, cool, 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 cool. And then last little thing, part C here. Within three steps. Oh, God, it's even worse and worse. Within three steps of the mean, you get 89% of the data. If you're interested, and I'm not going to make a huge deal out of this, um, the formula that is used here is this one. If you want to be within four steps, you make K4. So just to double check this real quick. Three steps, 89%. You with me? Mm -hmm. What do you get when you make K3? You get one minus one ninth, which is, which is eight ninths. Which yeah, not one ninth is point one 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 one. So eight ninths is point eight 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 eight. So then you get 89% if I round it. With me? Semi with me? I'll take that as a yes. You're with me. Right. You do not want to let me know anything. And so within four, if I want to do within four, you do one minus one over four squared, one minus one sixteenth, fifteen sixteenth, or whatever the hell that is. So that's the general formula. I am not as concerned right now with the formula of this as I am with the idea of this. So let me, let me do a specific concrete example. Uh, let's see. Did I write this down? I think I did. Yep. The average on the test was a 72.9. And the standard deviation was a, I'll go ahead and make that new, 14.131. So now, now when I say that, now this is the actual numbers from the test. This is test one for this class. The mean was a 72.9. Standard deviation was a 14.131, which is relatively a little bit bigger than normal. And what does that really tell you, though? What is that standard deviation of 14, the fact that it's a little bigger than normal? What does that mean about the grades? They were yeah, they were more spread out because standard deviation measures the spread of the data. So maybe there were a few really low grades and a few really high grades. There were a couple above 100. All right, and there were a couple down in the 40s. So that kind of explains why the standard deviation is so big because it was a little more spread out. Um, can you tell me between what's your grades? Would we find at least 75%? Of the grades of the students. If I went between this grade and this grade, there are 75% of the people. That's the grade they make. What does Chevy Chef say to help us out? How many steps do I have to take out? Two. So I start at 72.9. What's two steps up? Each step is 14.131. So two steps would be 28.262. So what do you get when you take two steps up? Add that to that. What do you get? Second. Hundred and one oh one point blah blah whatever. So far so good. What do you get when you take two steps down? Forty four point seven point six three eight to be precise, but. Uh, what did it say? 43 point whatever? No, 44. So in between about 44 and 101, I'd find at least 75% of the grades. In reality, I think I would find just about 100% of the grades in between those. But all Chevy Chef says is you find at least 75% within two steps. You with me? Cool. 
went out three steps, I should catch almost all the data. I only leave out at most 11%. I should catch at least 89% of the data. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Again, why is this important? The thing I just told you a second ago about if I knew the heights of people, I could figure out between what two heights, you know, would I catch so many of the people so that I can design my doors so that fewer people have to duck. Or when I'm creating airplane seats, what are the widths, the average width of everybody's hips? How big is your butt? And then the standard deviation, I can figure out how wide can I make a seat so that fewer people have to buy two, for example. You guys, you guys kind of with me? Good PR for the airplane? If they don't have a lot of people trying to buy two seats? <coughs> okay. Which is America, so it's got to be a little bit. All right. Cool. How are we doing with that? That's Chevy dude. That's Chevy Chevy. All right. That is a very abstract theorem. Now, what lives within this is, what if I have a normal distribution? Why can I suddenly be a lot more precise? What distribution does this work with? Any. So if you sit down, and I know not a lot of people are going to do this, but if you just sit there and you put, and you just make up a bunch of numbers, I don't care, some could be negative, some could be really big, hopefully you write it correctly, you know, some could, you just make a bunch of numbers and you find the mean and the standard deviation and you go up and down, you're going to have to catch at least 75% if you go two steps out, you have to catch at least, I don't care what the hell numbers you come up with, I don't care what you come up with. Make a big negative, make a big positive, make them tiny, 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 I don't care. That's what Chebyshev says, for any freaking distribution. So we can forgive him on the first one, at least 0%, way to go. How many people are going to vote for the guy? At least 0% of them. That's exciting. Kind of with me? We can forgive him because he gets a little more precise and it works for any damn set of numbers you can come up with. Crazy. So now if we take the same idea, but we say now we're going to restrict it so we only look at normal distributions. So now we can be much more precise. Because it's always got to have the same shape to it, right? And if it's skinnier, the standard deviation must be smaller. And if it's fatter, the standard deviation must be bigger. You with me? So it still has that same kind of basic idea we use for Chevy Chev and the people in Florida. You kind of with me? I can't escape this. But I can be a lot more precise. And this is called the empirical. Can I spell? No. Can you spell, Jeff? I forget. It's called the empirical rule. The word empirical refers to observations. So this rule was actually come up with by observing what these types of distribution would actually do. So this is why it's called empirical. Empirical classes are normally science classes. They're based on observations you make of the world. The empirical rule says this, within one standard deviation of the mean, there is 68% of the data. Full disclosure, it's actually 68.26%, whatever, so they do round it a little bit, but this is not at least, this is exactly this rounded, but we can go look at that. You must memorize these, by the way. So within one step of the mean, there's 68%. So if I take the mean and I go up one step, now this is getting cumbersome writing all this stuff out here, right? I don't like writing all that crap out. Let's just, let's just get to the point. Let's just say this is one step up, and this is one step down. So what's the mean going to be? What little number I'm going to put below the mean itself? How far away is it from itself? Zero. Anybody know what it is actually that I'm putting there? What is that called? Something we've talked about before? The something score? Z score. Z score. Z -score. Z -score. I knew I was going to give it away, but I had to get an answer. Uh, so that's the z-score I'm really doing. But see how it's really simple. If I take one step up, so the z-score must be one there because I'm one standard deviation away from the mean. That's what a z-score means. So if I go within one step, there's 68%. My picture is horribly drawn, but you guys will give me a board license on that. Within two steps...
There is 70, yeah, 95%. I should be shoving my brain. Now think about that. Within two steps, you catch almost all the data if it's normal. You only leave out 5%. So within two steps of the mean, you catch 95% of the data. And finally, within three steps, you catch 99.7% of the data. So if you're outside of three steps away, you are strange. You are not normal. You're not usual. Right? I would love some of my dean to walk by right now and say that. You guys are strange. You're not normal. But do you kind of see what I'm saying? If, if, let me give you another specific example from my life. Um, the average height of American men is 69. With a standard deviation of two point, I always forget if it's five or eight, we'll say five. Obviously, I gotta say American men because it's different depending on what country you're in. We'll just stick with where we are. This is known to be normal. Known to be normally distributed. So therefore I can use this rule. Cool. So it's even better than Chevy Chev. I could be a little much more precise. So, between what two data points would I find 68% of the data? Between what two heights would I find 68% of men? So if I take one step down, one step up, where do I end up at? 66 and a half? 71 and a half, cool. To take two steps, I would end up at 74 and 63. No, 64. So they actually end up making, I wish I would have brought a, a meter stick, but if you measure the door, I think most of the doors in these buildings are 76 inches tall. And 76 is right here. So above 74, let me see if we can take this idea a little further. How many, what percentage of the American male population is taller than 74 inches? Let's kind of work at that. How, what percentage is in here? Let me catch up to you. You're almost there. What percentage is in here? 95 because it's within two steps. You with me? 95% of all men are between this and this height. So that would be basically all of us, just about. Anybody taller than 74 inches? Any dude in here taller? Okay. Definitely. Two of you. Wow. All right. So two out of about 50 is 4%. That's actually not too far off. Um, so up here, so if this is 95%, how many, what percentage is outside of there? What percentage are really tall or really short? Two and a half each, so 5% total, so how much just on that side? Two and a half percent. That's exactly the kind of problem I love to give you on a test. Hint, hint. <laughs> right? Cough, cough. 2.5%. So 2.5%, I could say what percentage of American men taller than 74 inches? Another way to say that would be like that. I want to go ahead and introduce that right now. Might as well. This is what we're going to be using a lot in chapter uh, 4 and 6 and forever after that. This actually means probability, which is the same thing. The percentage, the probability that I find somebody taller than 74 inches is 2.5%. So if I made my door 74 inches tall, what percentage of men would have to duck? 2.5%. So they made the door 76 inches tall, so maybe only, who knows? So in chapter 6, we'll figure out how to figure out exactly what that is. Right now, you cannot tell me exactly what that is. You can just say it's less than 2.5%. That's all you know. You kind of with me? I can only talk about one step, two steps, three steps. Well, how many steps is 76? How many steps above the mean is 76? 
Another way to say that is what's the Z score for 76? 76 minus 69 divided by 2.5. Two point eight. All right. Well, trust me. <laughs> but trust me. Yeah. Two point eight. My math guy got to show off. That's it. That's all my skills. Two point eight steps. So you knew it was less than three steps, because three steps would have been up to seventy six and a half. So it's two point eight steps up. In chapter six, we'll figure out how to tell exactly what percentage is above that. Right now, I just can say it's less than two and a half percent. It kind of makes sense. They don't want to make hobbit-sized doors because then everybody's got to freaking either limbo or do this or something or just take it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who designed that door? All right. I'm desperately hoping you guys are starting to see the usefulness of it. If I know it's normal, even if I don't know it's normal, Chevy Chef comes in and does something for me. It's a lot more vague, but it's still something. If I know it's normal... I know exact amounts of where things are. I know how to design things so, so that people are comfortable in places. I know how many chairs to bring or how many seats to sell. That's even more important. How many seats to sell on an airplane based on how many people normally don't show up so they don't have to bump a lot of people so my airline is not getting bad press. You guys kind of with me? I mean, that's the usefulness of what the hell we're doing right now. Always a good thing for any teacher to do, but math people, we especially have to say, Here's why we're doing this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I have no time. But I want to at least introduce the idea in section 3-4. Has anybody done the SATs yet or ACTs or anything like that? SATs? When you get your score report, I don't even know what it looks like nowadays, but... They normally give you this thing, and they have a little star indicating you or something. They tell you what percentile you're in, right? It looks like star testing, if we've seen that. Oh, star testing. testing. I've heard of that, but I've never seen star mm -hmm. testing. Um, so the whole idea of percentiles is to kind of make it more fair. Because every time they redo the SAT, there's a chance they make it harder, or there's a chance they make it easier. And if you happen to pick the day that they made it harder, that would be very unfair except for the fact that they use percentiles, which compares you to everybody else who took that test that day. So if you are in the 86th percentile, let's say 80th percentile. Let's not make it even too free. If you're in the 80th percentile, are you happier or sadder than the person in the 50th percentile? You're happier. Happier. Why are you happier? What is the 80th? Does that mean you made 80% on the test? You got 80% of the questions right? Is that what that means? Probably not from my tone. What the hell does that mean then? If you're in the 80th percentile, what does that actually mean? You did better than 80% of the people that took that same test on the same day. Now that is a measure of relative standing, which is the name of this section just about. There you go. I like it. So... Because it's, it's fair, isn't it? It's relative to the people and relative to that test. If they make it harder, everybody's going to make lower scores, but then relative to each other, they're in the same place they would have been. You kind of with me? It makes it fair. So this means that 80% scored below you. Let me see how much I can get through here. Oh, good. I got five. That's good. Thanks. So let me start off with a very small set of data so that you don't spend the rest of the time watching me write data points. Um, how many do I have? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sweet. It's really hard to count as you create numbers in your head, so I don't even try anymore. Can somebody give me a guess as to what the 80th percentile, let's say this is a, a uh, 50 point quiz. What's the 80th percentile grade? And if you're honest, you're probably going to get it wrong, but it's, let's just start there and let's figure out why it's wrong. So, looking at the definition. All right. So, let's see, I got, I got a, a, a vote for 38. And then, from the same person, I like this. I got a vote for 41. Right. Yeah, some people want the presidential election to go. 
this guy, who this guy, who this guy. Um, there's a both wrong, and it's fine. <laughs> I love the look he gave me. But I can understand why you would think 38. Because you're actually thinking the opposite, which is cool. If you think 41, how many data points are below it? Eight data points, right? And eight divided by 10 is 80%. That's what the hell you just said, Jeff, so leave me alone. But if it's got 80% below it, it better have 20% above it. Does 41 have 20% above it? It's got one above it, right? So 38 has two above it, but only seven below it. You guys kind of with the problem here? This should feel a lot like median, because median is a percentile. Median is the what percentile? 50th. 50th percentile. It's right in the middle. And it has similar problems. It sometimes is a point, and it's sometimes the average of two points. And that's exactly what I have to do here. I have to average those two. What's the average of those two? 39.5. I like it. 39.5. Cool. So that would be, here's the symbol for the 80th percentile. P80 is the symbol for the 80th percentile. It would be, in this case, 39.5. Cool. Just looking at the clock. i got two minutes left. So very quick, the last little thing. I want to show you a, a little more. What if I have 180 list of data points, 180 data points in my list? Right. Yeah, I'd rather get some algebraic kind of way to find this, right? So does it make sense that if I want the 80th percentile, how deep should I go into my list? About 80% of the way in, right? And how long was my list? So n is 10. I want to go 80% of 10. That's step one. Step one is how, where is my answer? I want to go 80% of the way in. So what's 80% of 10? Eight. Step now. Now, if it comes out to a whole number, now, now think about the median. Where would the median for four numbers? Where would the median be? Is it the second data point? Why not? Because half of four is two, man. What the hell? Where is the median actually? You divide. The, you, you divide. You, you average the two in the middle. You with me? So you actually do two point five, two and a half. It's the two and a half number, the number in between two and three. So if your answer comes out on this step one, if your answer comes out to a whole number, you actually want to do the eight and a half, the, the average, the eighth, and the ninth. If it comes out to anything else, you round up to the next number. If it would have been 8.1, I would have taken the ninth number. You semi with me? We'll do more examples of this. So what are the eighth and the ninth numbers? 38 and 41. So step two is... Get the answer. So you take 38 and 41 divided by 2, and you get your 39 and a half. So it is exactly the median, just a more general example of that idea. Median is a specific type of percentile. Okay. Maybe. So next time we'll pick it up there. And we'll also talk about box and whisker plots. Just because. See you guys then. This sucks.